Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Saturday's DRF Bets Race of the Day is the Midsummer Derby, the Grade 1 Traverse Stakes from Saratoga. It is a great race. It is a fantastic card. You can bet it all with your new DRF Bets account. Sign up at drf.com forward slash bet. Get 10 times the bonus. You bet 20, you get 200. Here's the field for the Travers. You can access free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Download them. Handicap along with us. We'll take the field in post position order, beginning with the speedy number one, Trigger Warning, who opened up a clear lead in the okay. Indiana Derby, and it looked like he was going to pull off a mild upset, only to be run down by Southern California invader Axelrod. My question for you is, if he couldn't hold off mm -hmm. Axelrod in the Indiana Derby, how is he holding off some of the better three-year-olds in the country here? That's a fair question. He ran fine last time. He's actually run pretty well in each of his last two races, because his Ohio Derby was also good, with a little bit of a, a tougher track trip that day and he was a huge price in that race you know listen it's just a really tough spot for him he's got some speed he's got the rail I'm assuming he goes forward once again but you know even if he runs his last two races it's probably not going to be good enough against this but field. you're right that these connections have done a fine yeah. job with this horse he was 86 to 1 in the Ohio Derby and he was only beaten a length and he almost took him all the way in the Indiana Derby and the time form US pace projector for the Travers has trigger warning taking advantage yeah. of that inside post position under Irwin Rosendo the problem is he might have good magic breathing down his throat. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he's the only speed in the race. I mean, we'll see how the pace all plays out. They have it um, designated a fast pace in this race. Big field. We'll see. I guess it could be a fast pace. And you know, I doubt they're going to be blazing early in here, but if he's on the lead and taking pressure from a real good horse like Good Magic, he's probably in some trouble. The number two is the filly taking on the boys. It's Wonder Godot, who won the first two legs of the Canadian yeah. Triple Crown, opted against a Triple Crown sweep to run against the boys in this $1.25 million Travers. And listen, she's just been good since the blinkers came on yeah. in the Queen's Plate. She sat off in the Prince of Wales over a wet track. She knew it was a short field. She went right to the front. She dominated that bunch, but that was a weak bunch. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think the, the real question is, you know, how does she handle, you know, facing some much better Colts? She's beaten Colts in her last two races, but how does she face um, fair against some much better Colts this time? I think she's run, you know, well in her last two races. I thought her Kentucky Oaks was actually good, too. Yeah. She ran really well in that race and just couldn't get by uh, Monomoy Girl at the end. The problem is in her last two races, um, you know, she's beaten the same two horses both times. And, you know, those two horses who were shorter prices last time, but in the Prince of Wales, they were 28 to 1 and 46 to 1 and right second and third to her. And I mean, I'm just not sure that, you know, she was beating anything in those races. This is a way tougher spot. If you like her in this race, you like her because she can get a good trip in here. The mile and a quarter seems like it's no problem for her. And maybe it's a problem for some of these other horses. But is that enough to get her over the hump? Dan, I think she'll run well in here. I just don't like her that much in this race. The number three is Gronkowski, who finished an excellent second to Triple Crown winner Justify in his first start for Chad Brown in the Belmont Stakes. As expected, he was outrun in the early portion of the race. Yeah. Jose Ortiz kept him glued to the inside, and he made a good, strong run through the turn and sustained it nicely to finish second, finishing ahead of Hofberg, who came back yeah. to win the restricted curling stakes early in the Saratoga meet with a 100 buyer speed figure. Gronkowski the mile and a quarter will not be a problem. Can he be a little bit closer, or is he just going to be that one-run closer, typical European slow breaker? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the deal is with his Belmont Stakes there. I mean, because he just got completely outrun away from the gate. I mean, he was way out of it early. After that start, and, you know, for whatever reason, it's not like he, you know, broke terribly. He just didn't have any speed for whatever reason. After that, Jose Ortiz did everything, everything right. right with this horse and actually gave him a really good trip. I sort of felt like, um, I think he ran well on that race. I also feel like, um, he got second in there because he got that ride from Jose afterwards. And a lot of other horses sort of did some running to try and get the Justify on the lead around the turn. They couldn't get him. Once Justify put them away, this was the horse who was still running at the end. I thought he ran fine in that race. I think if he runs that race back, he's a contender in here. What's the right price for him, Dan? I feel like he's going to take money in this race, maybe even as low as second choice in this race, if that's possible, behind Chad's other horse. I don't really want him at that kind of a price, but I think I will use him somewhere. Does it bother you that he doesn't have sort of the prep leading up to the Travers? Horse, other horses have used the Haskell or the mm. Jim Dandy, more traditional prep races. Chad's bringing this horse cold off yeah. the Belmont. Is it simply in Chad I trust? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, you know me, I prefer that they race more than less, um, but I don't think it really, it really bothers me with this horse. I think it'll show up and run. Uh, 
I just wanted to like him more. I don't really like him that much. The great Wayne Lucas won the Travers in 2013, second off the layoff with Will Take Charge. He'll try to repeat that mm -hmm. feat with the very likable number four Bravazzo, the runner-up in both the Preakness and the Haskell. He chased good magic in vain last time out in the Haskell. Perhaps Mr. Lucas was using it as a prep. Yeah. I do like the source's tactical speed, but I wonder after 12 starts, if we've seen his best already. Yeah, it does feel like he's going to have to find a way to improve in this race. Um, obviously, he ran well when, when a closing second in the Preakness. Um, I still don't think that race is as close as other people thought it was with Justify. Um, after that, his Belmont stakes didn't do a lot for me. And last time, I mean, all right, he was second best in that race, but you know, he got a good trip in that race. He never made a race of it with good magic. It was not close. He has to run a lot better than that here. Maybe he'll do it. Keelan graduate Vino Rosa, winner of the Wood Memorial, a rallying third in the Jim Dandy. This is a horse that frustrates me because I think he has a wealth of natural ability. It's just that he seems to be outrun in most of his races and yeah. he's under the whip early, almost as if he's completely unfocused and running in spots. And then when he does pick it up, he comes with a good charge as he did in the Jim Dandy. I think the mile and a quarter is really going to help. I think he benefits from the preparation in that Jim Dandy. Right. But are we going to see Vino Rosa fall 20 lengths out of it under the whip again? Then it's really at the mercy of pace and trip. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I'm with you on, especially the Jim Dandy last time, because I, that was almost a race where he just couldn't keep up up the backstretch. And Johnny V was actually riding him, trying to get him motivated a little bit. He wouldn't do it. He was running at the end. Um, it was really way too late for him to, to be a factor in that race. But he was running at the end. It's just one of those situations with him, um, where I just, I feel like his good race gives him a chance in here. I don't know if he's going to run it. The Jim Dandy was such an odd race for me that I, I don't want to put too much stock in it. I'm just happy that he has the run and now he gets to go to the mile and a quarter. I thought his Belmont was actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he was the one horse in there. He had a little, got in, put in a little tight early, but he actually went early and took a run at justifying the lead all the way around that second turn. That he actually ran well in there and maybe the second best race, in my opinion, in the Belmont Stakes. And obviously, he has the Wood, the Wood Memorial to get to. The Wood Memorial set up perfectly for him with a big, fast pace, but he might catch a pace in this race, too. And if he can put in a run like he did that day, I think he's got a mild chance to pull off an upset here. The number six, Meistermind, goes out for Steve Asmus, and this horse still eligible for a now winners of two life. It appears that Steve's really asking a lot for this horse. And against Elders, most recently over a muddy track, yeah. the third horse, Can You Dig? It's a New York bred that came back to win the Evan Shipman for state breads with a 96 buyer speed figure. It just seems like a bit too much too soon. Yeah, the, that horse that won that race, Proven Reserves, is pretty yeah. good for Chad. We'll see what happens with him. Um, he's also a three-year-old. Well, you know, we'll see what happens. To me, so far, he hasn't just, he hasn't run a race that makes him even close in here. He has the win over a mile and a quarter, two starts back. You know, if you think that's a good thing, you know, then maybe this is the horse you want to take a second look at. To me, mile and a quarter races for three-year-olds that aren't called the Derby or the, or the Travers, they're the domain of slow horses, and this is a slow horse. The number seven, King Zachary, goes out for Dale Romans, who of course upset American Pharaoh in this race a few years ago with Keen Ice. He's always liked this horse, King Zachary, winner of the Matt Wynn, two starts back in very fast time. What happened last time out in the Indiana Derby? Because for one reason or another, he didn't fire. I guess there are a few folks out there that are saying bounce. Oh, maybe bounce. Yeah, I don't know. When I go back and watch the race, I mean, I like what Alvarado did early because this horse was on the way to getting caught very wide in that race. And he took him back and he got him actually a halfway decent trip. But I don't know, man. I didn't see the run from this horse. He was on his wrong lead at the end of that race. I I'm really concerned that he doesn't want to go nearly this far. And even if he does want to go this far, the Matt Wynn buyer notwithstanding, he's got to improve to beat this field. Mendelssohn is the Jekyll and Hyde horse in this race. He won the UAE Derby by a country mile. Yes, he did it against a weak field over an inside speed favoring yeah. track that helped him. And then he was beaten a country mile in the Kentucky Derby where perhaps he didn't like the sealed sloppy track. Yeah. He returned in the Dwyer. He was expected to run a big race. He caught Forenze Fire who right. freaked that day. Did you think Ryan Moore was a little bit too aggressive with this horse early? No, I thought Ryan Moore gave this horse a perfect trip in that race. Um, and it, to me, that's the race that really makes him hard to like in here. Because, you know, you can pull apart his UAE Derby and find ways to be a little skeptical of that one. But then you can go to a Kentucky Derby and feel like, well, I'm not going to put too much faith in that race either. He didn't have a fair chance that day. So to me, the race that you judge him off of is the Dwyer. And he got a good trip in that race. He was right up on the pace with Noble Indy, who just, it seems like he can't run it all anymore. He took that race over through the turn. Friends of Fire ran right by the well, so stretch. Ran right by. Yeah, I, I just don't, and he didn't hold second. You're right. I just, he did not run well last time. I would never bet him in this race.
The favorite on the morning line is the number nine, Good Magic, last year's two-year-old champion, second in the Derby, beaten a length in the Preakness, winner of the Haskell. He's just a nice horse. Here's a Chad Brown formulator fact. You know it's going to be good. It's nine for 18 over the past four years with three-year-old last out winning dirt routers, making their second start following a layoff line of 45 days or greater. Good Magic chased a good pace in the Monmouth. He also chased an overmatched horse and got a great trip, took over with three furlongs yep. to go. And Jose Ortiz kept him busy going to the end of this race. Is a mile and a quarter too far? I know he ran well in the he Derby. Did. He's going to probably get a similar trip to yeah. the Haskell here, sitting just off of trigger warning. He's probably in control turning into the stretch. Yeah. But does the 10 bother you? It, it, it bothers me a little bit. I'm not sure that it, I really feel like he wants to go this far. I don't know that it has to get him beat on Saturday, but I, I'm a little concerned about it. Um, but you're right. I mean, if you go back to his Derby and even his Preakness at a mile and three sixths, I mean, he ran well in those two races, you know, better than anybody not yeah. named Justify, in my opinion. Then he came back as Haskell. Yes, it was a very soft trip in that race, tracking a million to one shot on the lead. He didn't finish it off that strongly, but he won it with a solid figure. It was a perfect prep for the Travers. He's way the horse to be in here. Tenfold, you liked him, the Jim Dandy, the local prep for the Travers. Everything was going swimmingly. He pressed uh, Flame <laughs> away through some solid fractions True. down the backstretch. He was very confidently handled by Ricardo Santana. And it looked like he was on his way to a comfortable win. And then he got a little nutty in the stretch. Yeah. I don't know what happened. He I started know. drifting out. He started drifting in. He almost blew that race. This yeah. horse has some ability. A, what do you make of all those antics in the stretch of the Jim Dandy? B, how would you ride? him here yeah I don't know I don't know what to make of all the entities and I don't, I don't really know what to say about it, it. Like I don't know why he chance. did that yeah it was very strange that he just if he had kept a straight line in the stretch he, we won that race pretty easily I think it was a nice performance for him and you would have seen you know a little bit of a faster figure would have put him into range anyway I think he's a big player in this race and the best thing about him is he's got a perfect running style you don't have to go right up front to the pace with him but he's not getting outrun in this race he's not going to be compromised by dynamics in my opinion would you just follow good magic yeah. out of there if you're Ricardo sure. Santana when you watch Jose push the button and go after him and see what we got with Tenfold because I think I, this was going to get the distance. Yeah, I think he is too. I think there are a lot of things to like about this horse. And again, that Jim Dandy was such a goofy race that I don't want to put too much stock in it, even though he managed to prevail in the end. This horse is pretty good. He's still, you have to remember, he's still very lightly raced. He's come a long way in a short amount of time. I think there's a real chance he jumps forward in this race. Last but certainly not least is the number 11 Catholic boy who just won the Grade 1 Belmont Derby on the turf. He has won on dirt in the past, the Grade 2 Remsen, in an impressive fashion as a two year old. And he was on the Derby trail earlier this yep. year and it just didn't work out. His most recent run on dirt came against Audible in the Florida Derby. Audible beat him by a good margin. Audible ran third in the Kentucky Derby. He, I think, is better on turf. He is game. He is gutsy. Yeah. How would you ride him here? Because, boy, it seems like they found something in his last two races, putting him to the front. But I think that's more turf speed than dirt speed. Yeah, they were. there were a couple of very smart rides by Castellano in his last two races to go on with it to the lead and then make analyze it, come and get him in the stretch. And he managed to fight that horse off both times. Um, I'm not sure that those wins are looking that great now after analyze its yeah. last race, but we'll see what happens. Maybe that might just be a distance thing. The problem I have with Catholic Boy is I liked his Remsen just fine. Love I thought he it. ran really well in that race. I hate his other two dirt races. I don't think he ran well either time in those races, and he just can't show up here with one of those dirt races that he's already run and win the Travers. It's not happening. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Grade 1 Travers stakes. Mike, you like Vino Rosso. He's going to get this distance. I agree with everything you said about the Belmont. After the other pace horses backed out of it, he made a sustained run on the turn to try to get within shouting range of yeah. Justify, and then he just flattened out a little bit. I agree with you that he might have run the second best race there. If you think the Jim Dandy was nothing more than a prep, fine. He's 10 to 1 on the morning line. To me, that's value. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, that's why I picked him on top. I don't love him in this race. I'm just hoping that he gets a little bit of a setup, gets the distance, and maybe makes you know one of his better runs in the race, because he can't run his Jim Dandy and win here, but maybe he needed that one. I'm not way against Good Magic in this race. Yeah. I think he is the horse to beat. I just wanted to take a small shot against him as the favorite. You're going 5, 9, 3, and 10. I'm going 9, 3, 10, and 5. I think Good Magic gets the same trip as the Haskell. He takes over in the stretch, and we'll see if his class gets some, helps him get the mile and a quarter in the Travers, the Midsummer Derby. Again, you want to play this card on Saturday, and you want to play it with DRF Bets, because when you sign up for a new account at drf.com forward slash bet, you receive 10 times the sign-up bonus. You bet 20, and you get 200. Approximate post time for the Travers, race number 11 at the spa on Saturday, 544 Eastern. Good luck.